Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlis here, and this is how to use Quillfish. So, Quillfish doesn't have incredible stats. We're looking at another Pokemon where it doesn't even have one stat over 100, and then the defenses and the hit points, it's not really that great. 85 speed is okay, so I guess it does have to go without saying at this point that this Pokemon isn't going to see a just a ridiculous amount of play, but it is for the people that have been curious of understanding how Quillfish works, maybe it's their favorite Pokemon, maybe they just really want to use it, or they have an opportunity to use it in some kind of non-competitive format. That's really what all these guides are about. I'm just going to review every Pokemon in the Pokedex that I feel will be able to get some viability, <clears throat> not love disc, and then we can just see what kind of strategy this Pokemon can have, and it, there might be some power and there might be some sweeping p potential. We've actually seen a Quillfish sweep for Fan Fridays, so if you really get down to the specialized play about any Pokemon, it does have its opportunities while not being the most consistent Pokemon ever. So looking at its typing, it's a Poison Water typing. Poison Water is super interesting because you have a super common weakness in that ground, Electric is fairly common as well, but then you get a ton of resistances. Fighting, Poison, Bug, Steel, Fire, Ice, and Fairy, and Water, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of resistances. If this Pokemon was a bit tankier, you would really be able to switch this thing on almost anything, and as long as you're not getting hit by Ground, Electric, or Psychic, you know, standard just weakness things, it's going to actually play out very well. Hopping into Pokemon Showdown, Quillfish. It's a stockpile Pokemon, which means you have stockpile options for it, and those can go in a lot of different ways. But Quillfish also has Intimidate on top of Stockpile, which is actually fairly strong. You bring this Pokemon in against a physical Pokemon, and that means you're going to start getting some free Stockpiles because they lose 66% of their attack, you gain 50% of your defenses, so you're getting a lot of effective stats against them really fast, and they won't be able to damage you very well. After that, you can Pain Split, get some health back, and that's going to be... Pretty much your main engine on Quillfish, that Black Sludge is going to give you some health back um, if it's a poison type Pokemon, which Quillfish is, you get a leftovers effect, and then it means you can still put leftovers on a different Pokemon on your team, so this still plays out really well. Now your sustain isn't going to be ridiculous, like you could rest sleep talk with Toxic, but then that lets you get walled out. So I just have Toxic and Scald here, that if it's a Pokemon that can't be Toxic, like a Steel type or Poison type, you just try to Scald them, or if they're a very threatening physical Pokemon, like even after the Intimidate, or even if you haven't, like, say your Intimidate goes down, you have one or two stockpiles, the opponent switches out into a new Pokemon, well, you're, they're not going to be Intimidated anymore, so it is worth to get the Burn on them, or if you get Burn and Scald and Stockpile on the physical Pokemon, you're, they're not going to be able to do anything to you. So it's pretty much just going to be about the status. Also, Scald is a little bit of damage. Now, unfortunately, your special attack is super low. Like, if you had 95 special attack and 55 attack, the Scald strategy would be a lot better. But with this, it does feel a little out of place. Like, you're pretty much using it for that chance to status, and you hope you get the status. Uh, you can also just go for Protect, and now you're just a generic Protect Staller Pokemon. But you do have decent damage. I mean, once you get Pain Split, you set up the Toxic, you're getting health back. They should be damage you, j damaging you a bit less. You have that Sustain from Black Sludge. And then eventually they just get burned down, and your health slowly goes up just a little. So you're really working on that with the Stockpile. Now, again, 65 hit points. So, like, this, this doesn't look good. That even if at 3 Stockpiles, you're still going to be taking high amounts of damage, and that is something to note. Now, another thing that Quillfish can do is with the Swift Swim ability, it can actually be a really good lead Pokemon, and I feel it has a lot of interesting potential here. So you want to run the same thing, just Impish Nature, max out the hit points, max out the special defense. You don't need to invest in the speed because Swift Swim doubles your speed, and then you just set up Rain Dance. So Rain Dance and a Damp Rock means that this is going to be a singles Rain Dance setter that people might not expect. Say they open with Stealth Rocks or something like that. Well, you just Rain Dance. And now you get your rain, you still have all of your health, and now you can start setting up. You can use spikes and then destiny bonds. That you're just going to have a lot of speed over your opponent. So once you're out speeding them, it's just going to be very strong because rain dance, you trade status, spikes, you survive a hit, destiny bond. Now you trade your Pokemon and you still get your status up. So you make it a 5v5 with rain up, which means now you bring in other Swift Swim Pokemon or other Pokemon that make use of that rain. And you still have spikes, or you can also have toxic spikes that you can maybe even go for both. But Quillfish does have a couple of other things that it wants to use. Remember guys, this is not a move set. This is just going to be some other moves. You can use Taunt. That you set up Rain Dance, you Taunt. And if they were trying to go for any other setup, that gets shut down. Now you get a free turn to get those spikes, get the Toxic Spikes. You can also go for Thunder Wave, which means Quillfish might be able to uh, sw switch out and then set Rain later while putting Status around the team. And Waterfall. Since you do have 95 Attack, Stab under Rain is actually going to hit a Waterfall pretty hard. So that's pretty solid. I don't really recommend Poison Point, just Swift Swim. And then with the Focus Sash, 
Focus Sash means that you can run that waterfall and maybe just have a bit more of offenses, or no matter what, you're going to be getting that setup off. That the main problem with Quillfish is that because of its low defenses, you're not really going to survive too much. Like a Mega Manetric using Thunderbolt is going to KO you regardless of how many hit points and special defense investment you have. But at the same time, playing it this way will let you survive a Volt Switch from a lot of electric Pokemon, so it does kind of help your setup by being tanky, but at the same time, if they're going for outright super effective power, then that's where the Focus Sash might come in handy. It's all up to you. I think the extra three turns of rain can really pay off though, because once you're done with your setup, you're at least looking at three, four, or five extra turns of rain, and now you just go and follow through. Toxic Spikes, pretty strong, and that's kind of it. Then when we look at some other things, maybe go for Haze, you can bring in, eliminate stat changes for them, and since you're not using the Stockpile set, Haze is going to work okay right here. And that's really what we have, so there's a couple of other extra moves that Quillfish can make use of, but mostly it's going to be about setup for the status, or setup for the stockpile, and going into things like that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and that's how you use Quillfish, and I hope you all have a nice day.